Horus is finally dead! <laughs> and boy, with this movie, did it sure go out! The Flash is the latest and final movie within Zack Snyder's canon, or what has come to be referred to by fans of the DC movies as the Snyderverse. Boy, am I glad we're done with the Snyderverse. I didn't like it. That's for another video. But for now, we are going to talk about The Flash. And boy, is this movie okay. This movie is not particularly great. It is not particularly bad. It's a little bit above average, but overall not much to write home about. Obviously, The Flash is based on the comic book storyline of Flashpoint, though with many, many things changed. And honestly, the changes work fine, but the biggest one is because obviously we haven't seen any kind of Professor Zoom or Reverse Flash character within the Snyderverse because we've never gotten a solo Flash movie before. There is no antagonist that Barry is up against in this film. Barry, of his own volition, decides to go back in time and try to save his mother's life, causing the world to kind of shatter and be changed. Biggest things in this universe that are different, Barry's personality is wildly different in this universe than it is in his. Bruce Wayne is now Michael Keaton instead of Batflick. And Superman never made it to Earth, instead Kara made it to Earth and she is Supergirl. Now, for me, losing the antagonist that Barry is specifically going against, or Flashpoint specifically, doesn't work because it makes it feel really weird and kind of forced. All it is is Barry trying to fix his own mistake, but not by fixing the thing he did to fuck everything up. Instead, just saving the day, which even in the original Flashpoint was never his intention. All he wanted to do was get back to his own time. But Barry chooses to go back without getting tricked into it, paints Barry as this super selfish and self-absorbed character, which we've never seen him be in these films before. And it also makes him seem like someone who wouldn't think through his action. Again, in the original Flashpoint, after defeating Professor Zoom, he goads Barry into doing this by preying on Barry's weakness of not having been able to save his mother. And so it makes sense that Barry in an act of impulse and anger would have done some event like this without fully thinking through the consequences. In this, Barry comes to the conclusion that he can help the process just in a split second on his own and doesn't seem to think through any potential implications with that. And so that just felt off to me. Also, you had the perfect antagonist in the movie. There's a character that shows up towards the end, another speedster, obviously, who shows up and kind of takes credit for pushing Barry on the path to make the movie's events happen. You could have used him to make the movie's plot happen. He's right there. He's a speedster who could potentially have shown up, done whatever, and either tricked Barry into running backwards with him through time, got him to follow him, or, you know, goaded him to do something stupid and rash. Not 100% sure which, but you could have done something with this speedster character that made the events of Flashpoint more play out in a logical way. I think that's one of my bigger issues with this movie, is that Flash doesn't feel like the Flash. Barry Allen doesn't feel like Barry Allen. Being almost kind of scatterbrained and just all over the place with his thoughts and how fast he's going and his mind constantly running about a thousand miles an hour and him just never taking a second to shut up and listen and being super scatterbrained and kind of jumping from one topic to another and then blah, 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 blah. It feels weird because that's not Barry Allen. That's closer to Impulse's characterization. And while I love Impulse, giving Impulse's personality to Barry Allen felt very weird. The last thing I kind of want to talk about is the effects of this movie. Just real quick, not the best. A lot of the effects in this movie look off. A lot of them look like they were made in a computer. They don't look super photorealistic. And while that didn't personally pull me out of the movie, I do understand if it does pull someone out of the movie. The last thing that I really want to talk about is the most fun parts of this movie have absolutely nothing to do with the flash. The best parts of this movie, the most entertaining parts of this, were the parts that involved Michael Keaton's Batman, seeing him do Batman things again. This looked 
so cool. Seeing Michael Keaton Batman get to fight on this insane level that we've never seen before was so much fun to watch. But again, that's the most fun part of the movie is seeing him do Batman things because we've never gotten to really see him do Batman things. And then the other cool parts, there's, towards the end of this movie, there is a kind of convergence is the best thing I could call it of the different universes within the DC multiverse and we see a bunch of different cameos from past actors who have played DC characters different iterations of DC characters not necessarily directly played by people in the past it was super cool to see it was a lot of fun to like get to see that and again that was one of the best parts of the movie basically this movie relies very heavily on nostalgia and what people remember from the past to fuel their enjoyment of this movie overall the flash parts of this film are rather unenjoyable to me and overall it causes me to think of this movie not as one that anyone could go back to or really should go back to it's more of a if you have the time and you're bored go ahead and watch it but you are probably not going to find anything super special within the film all of that being said the effects the kind of lackluster story and the overall just less enjoyment that i personally had out of this movie for me this movie rolls a 13. Now, like I said, a little bit better than average, and if you are going to come in, and you can watch this movie and find it completely serviceable, but for me, I didn't find it enjoyable enough to warrant going back to it. If I found it on TV, or I was bored one day, maybe I would recommend watching it, but it is not a film I would say go out of your way to watch. And for me, I found that slightly disappointing as I love The Flash. He is a personal favorite character of mine and a general fan favorite. And to see his first movie outing be slightly disappointing, or at least for a solo movie outing being slightly disappointing, was a little sad. But with the death of the Snyderverse and the going forward with James Gunn's universe, I am hopeful that we are going to see a good iteration of The Flash on screen soon. Alright, real quick before I get into the end of this video, I did not want to touch on the shit that Ezra Miller has done or been accused of. They are a trash human being and I, while I do not wish ill of people generally, I do hope that they either get the help that they deserve or just never act again. And for me, because of them, it's a little frustrating to me that this is the movie that DC decided that they wanted to push and push out. I will get into all of that in another video down the line. For now, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. I truly enjoy talking about movies and I enjoy making this kind of stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed yourself with this video. If you like to follow me on any of my social medias, links to all of those are going to be in the description down below. That is all that I have. Hope you all have a fantastic day. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.